Hi, this is Eric Hansen with Communications Conversations. Today I'm here with Blaise Olson, Executive Vice President with Thunheim Partners, and uh, we are here at the PR 2.0 event at uh, Any Dyna, lovely Dyna, Minnesota, hometown to you, I know. Um, how are you today? I'm well, how are you? Good. Uh, I want to ask you a few questions about your presentation that you just wrapped up. A, you talked about um, PR 2.0 in terms of 3D. Talk a little bit more about what you meant by that. Well, I think that um, many people think that as these channels grow that you just have to s send stuff out in one channel and let the people in that channel um, interact with it. And the difference is that in 2.0 these channels interact with each other. Facebook interacts with Twitter, Twitter interacts with Facebook, Flickr interacts with Facebook. Um, and so you really have to be multi-dimensional in your strategy uh, as to not think that there's some sort of silver bullet that's going to hit your audience and everything's going to be fine. The spaghetti test. You had an interesting graphic up there that talked about the spaghetti test. Um, talk to a little bit about what that means, A, and then how brands can learn to adapt that mindset a little more. Well, I think the, um, the space that we are entering with you know, these 2.0 tools and, and 2.0 strategies is so untested. Um, it's moved so quickly that if you don't think that you know, starting something uh, you want to test it a little and see if you're going to get a reaction before you spend a lot of time, a lot of energy, and maybe even a lot of money uh, on, you know, launching something um, that you got to test it. It's like, you know, making sure the spaghetti's done. And so, you know, online coupons are one of those things that we've tested for small brands and they've worked, and so now larger brands are going to try them out. Um, some of our brands, you know, you take part of your audience and you test something on them, and you take the other half of your audience and you test something on them, and you see which one gets better reaction. Um, words matter, images matter, um, but you know it's cheap to to test them over and over. Mm -hmm. Okay. So one of the brands you work with is Punch. Yes. And you talked a little bit in, in there about some of the amazing results they've seen in the last few months through the social channels that you've worked with them on. Why do you think Why do you think they've been more open to that than some of the other brands that you might work with? Because I think fundamentally their product never changed. This wasn't about introducing new products. It wasn't about innovation in their service. Um, it was about driving customers to their store to do the punch experience and to have a punch pizza. And so for them, it was about traffic, it was about interacting, and um, you know, frankly, we, we could check, check the insights before we even launched to know that they had fans, they had followers, they had mentions, they had photos in Flickr, mm -hmm. um, they had digs. And so our gut told us, and, and some research told us, they had some presence there already, um, and it just needed some cultivation um, and some content for us to feed it. Hmm. Um, a lot of people know you as a, a traditional public affairs guy, even though you clearly you're more of a broad PR person, but you understand the social space, obviously. How do you think some of those tools can apply to some of our public leaders here in Minnesota and nationally, and how they can help connect with voters and their publics better? Well, I think, um, I think the key here is that, you know, as you say, these are conversations. And they're conversations with people. And authenticity is, I think, the, the one brand trait or value trait that applies both to products and to people. Trending in politics, um, authenticity is probably the single most uh, successful factor for most of the modern winners in politics. Social media allows people to be authentic, to have authentic conversations, to talk about it. Um, and that's really important. Um, and so I think, you know, it's interesting. Um, we have a governor's race going on here in Minnesota. And, you know, once uh, Minority Leader Seifert left the role as Minority Leader and became a candidate for governor, I've noticed he stopped tweeting as much. Um, is it because he's worried? Is it he feels constrained? Um, our firm, Tunheim, has a partnership with Blue State Digital. Um, which are the folks who did the work for Obama. Mm -hmm. And so we're working on, you know, kind of big stuff there, and then how do the learnings there uh, do well? One of the stories Blue State Digital tells, and I think it, 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 it speaks to politics, and, and it's your gut check. Uh, they weren't going to send out a fundraising appeal during the Republican National Convention until after McCain's speech. But when Sarah Palin made her speech, and they had this gut check that their supporters would respond and be offended, it was the single largest fundraising email in the entire Obama campaign. It was off market, off schedule, off budget. It took four people in an office about 25 minutes to write it and send it, and it raised $21 million. It's, it was about, they had an authentic feeling about the mood 
and they sent it, and they got the results. That's what this is really about. Wow. Okay. Thank you, Blaze. Thank, Thank you for your time today, and uh, good luck in the future. You too.